Welcome back to the Chess Goals YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to go over a 30 plus 30 game from VIP member Birdcell. He had the black pieces in this game, and he's using the Chess Goals Dynamic Slav repertoire against the London system. All right, so the game starts with d4, d5, an early bishop to f4 by white. This signals the London system. And after e6, knight to f3, white is definitely going London system here. They could play c4 later, but it really doesn't go well with the bishop on f4. So when you see this set up by white, think London system. Now we see bishop to d6 by Birdcell. This is the start of the chess goals dynamic Slav repertoire against the London. I really like this line. It's very tricky. And as we'll see, there's some ways that white can go wrong in the next few moves. So white retreats with bishop to g3. And now queen to e7 by Birdcell. This is the start of kind of what we call the chess goals wrinkle in these lines, right? This is an odd looking move. Why are you putting the queen on e7? But the idea is simple. We want bishop takes g3, followed by queen b4, checking the king and attacking the pawn on b2. So that's the idea. White plays pawn to e3. And this is already a bit dubious of a move. You see the question mark exclam here. Bishop takes g3 by black. H takes g3, and now we see queen to b4 check. And I think you could argue here that black has already equalized the game, and they're going to win the b2 pawn and possibly be able to play for an advantage if white isn't able to drum up enough counterplay for that pawn. So white blocks with knight to d2. Queen takes b2. Now what I like about this is typically in the London, it's a very solid opening. The positions are kind of dry in a way. And white just has that very small advantage that they can milk for the whole game. In these lines, when we're going to take on b2 like this, this creates an imbalance. Um, the black side is up a pawn, but the white side has extra development as compensation for that pawn. Right? So we get this dynamic imbalance of up material for play for white. Right? And if we're able to retreat the queen safely and get our pieces developed, we could just be up a pawn going into the end game. So this increases the winning chances for both sides, and that's something that we go for in our uh, chess goals opening courses. We want dynamic play. It's called the dynamic Slav repertoire, and we want chances to play for the win. So white plays bishop to d3, getting developed. Knight to f6 by Birdsell. Very good move. Also defends this pawn on h7, just in case white had any tricks up their sleeve with rook takes or bishop takes. Now we see knight to e5 by white. A very aggressive move. I think the plan is they would like to bring the other knight to f3, maybe play even pawn to f4 and look at some sort of kingside expansion. But there's a very good reply by Birdcell here. Knight b to d7. I like this move a lot. Knight b to d7 puts the immediate pressure on the knight on e5. And we have this double attack. Knight takes e5, and when white takes back with the pawn, queen takes e5, gaining a second pawn. Uh, another good shot here that I think is worth mentioning, pawn to c5 by black. I like this as well because it's a nice way to fight for these central squares. White cannot take on c5. Let's say d takes c5. Now we win the knight with queen takes e5. The other thing that I like about pawn to c5 is we just talked about this kingside expansion for white. Black could go for the queenside expansion. right? So we know white doesn't want to take on c5. Black could look to play pawn to c4 taking that bishop away, and then after the queen gets out of the way, retreat her back here, then we could play b5, a5, b4, and all of these queenside pawns start marching up the board, and that's where white can play for that 3-on-2 majority on the queenside, try to create a pass pawn. So c5, another interesting move here, but I think knight b to d7, just as good. I like this move a lot. So at this point, white plays pawn to a4, and this is a blunder. So here we go. We're at move 10. Uh, White's a strong player, rated 1760. And at this point, we see a4 by white. And Birdcell missed the strong reply, but knight takes e5 gives black a nice advantage. After d takes e, queen takes e5. This black queen is ready to retreat. It's going to come back to d6 if needed. Black is up two pawns. And I don't think white has any compensation for the pawns. After queen d6, black is going to play e5. Get this nice big pawn center, e5, d5. It's looking good. I think it's over a two-pawn advantage for black, according to Stockfish. 
And after knight takes e5, you might be wondering, well, what if white attacks the queen? There's this nice in-between move, knight takes d3 check. And after c takes d, now the queen can retreat. And in this case, black is up a piece. Black has an extra bishop sitting here on c8 and an extra pawn on b7. So four points of material up for black. Stockfish is saying up five and a half points. So after 10a4, knight takes e5. Very strong move. Birdsell in the game played queen to b4. I get why he did it. Um, if you can't calculate that this works for sure, you may want to play it safe and just retreat the queen. And black does still have an advantage here. So that's what I always like to say. Trust your calculation first. So you should, if you haven't looked at this move, then one of your takeaways should be look for more candidate moves. But if you did look at knight takes e5 and you rejected it due to calculation, then your takeaway should be work on the calculation here. Try to get those concrete lines figured out because it is critical to find these sort of moves like knight takes e5 because it really increases the winning chances over playing queen to b4. And all of those moves add up. So to be precise, you really want to try to find a move like knight takes e5 here. Now we see g4 by white. I think again, white should play knight takes d7. So both on this move, and I don't think I mentioned it, but when white played a4, I think white should have also played knight takes d7. Get rid of this idea of knight takes e5 for black. Um, so at this point again, knight takes e5 is the strongest move, but now it's getting a little bit more difficult to understand. Let's just take a look at what could happen. d takes e5, knight to e4. This is the strongest variation for black. And the idea is we want to weaken the white pawn center by moving that d4 pawn over to e5. Now we see double pawns for white on the e file. They already have double pawns on the g file. And this is going to help us a little bit in the center. And if white plays a move like bishop takes e4, we take back. And after castle, we could play a move like queen to c3, trying to scoop up this e pawn. White's going to scoop up our e pawn. And it gives a nice, comfortable advantage for black. So black is still up one pawn. There's really not an attack for white, and we're going to get castled soon. Maybe even queen side, depending on what white does, but probably king side. But in the game, after g4, Birdsell played queen to d6. And I think queen to d6 allows pawn to g5, which white missed. It puts an uncomfortable question to this knight. It doesn't really have any good squares. And if it goes to e4, that might drop a pawn. If it goes to g8, it looks very passive. So I think white missed a shot here with pawn to g5. Now we see knight takes d7 played by white. And this is finally being played so that black can't play knight takes d7, knight takes e5, excuse me. Bird cell takes back. And at this point, knight takes would be slightly better just because of this g5 threat, but they're pretty close. I like what Birdsell does coming up. So knight to g8, we see white get a little bit greedy. Rook takes h7, and white's going to regret this very soon. Rook takes, bishop takes, knight to e7. And now we see on to g6 by white. This is a mistake. Look at what Birdsell does in reply. If you want to take a second, pause the video and try to find the move. I really like what Birdsell plays on the next move. On to f6. Look at the bishop on h7. It can't go to g8 because the knight guards it, and it can't retreat on the diagonal because the pawn is stuck on g6. So Birdsell cemented that bishop on h7. I really enjoy this move. I think it's a nice positional idea, and now it's almost like white is down a piece for the rest of this game. Knight to f3 by white. Birdsell castles queenside. a5, I think going for a, an attack against the black king. And now we see a nice move, pawn to e5, breaking open the center. So because black is essentially up a piece, two against one, it makes a lot of sense. Let's open up the center and try to attack the white king. a6 by white. Birdsell calmly replies, pawn to b6, shutting it down. And now we see a critical mistake by white. Queen to d3, Birdsell forks with pawn to e4. And Birdsell goes on to win this game in a very clean fashion after winning the knight on f3. So this queen has to move, and then e takes f3 was played. Uh, the game won another 17 moves, but we're not going to show it in this video. But let's talk about the takeaways. 
I think Birdsell played a really nice opening, getting to this point with queen takes b2, knight to b, knight b to d7 was good, a4. So I think this is the main takeaway, figuring out why did you miss knight takes e5? Was it playing too quickly? Was it not looking at enough candidate moves or calculation? That's one thing to figure out, I think, in terms of a negative takeaway. Positive takeaway, though, you played nine really good moves to begin with. And I think after this little shaky stretch, um, missing this and also kind of watching that g5 push around this point. I'm oh, sorry, queen d6 right here. Missing this g5 push. I think those were the two main takeaways for improvement. But your opening was really sound, and then you also finished the game really well. So overall, I think it's a very positive game. You played really well, and I think you just have a, those couple little takeaways out of the opening. And what I'm going to do is I'll put a link to the video up above with a preview video of how we combat the London system with the chess goals dynamic slav repertoire. So make sure to check out that video next. Please uh, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and let your friends know about Chess Goals YouTube. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.